So, beloved in Christ, today is the seventh Sunday in the season of Easter. And the readings of this day, especially the Gospel, point to us that the unity of believers, the unity of Christians, is very much dear to the heart of Jesus. Therefore, the message to us today is that divisions in Christianity is actually an assault, a dent on the very image of Christ, and in fact, a dent on the good news that we purport to carry. Now, this comes to us not as a surprise. In 2014, a revelation was that in Ghana alone, we have not less than 10,000 churches. Now, dear friends in Christ, you then begin to pause. What is the reason why that almost every day there seems to be one church or the other springing up? It comes out of divisions. And the readings of today reveal to us that it hurts the body of Christ. It hurts Jesus Christ to see his followers, believers, divide themselves this way. Now, St. Paul, for a very important reason, became one who was very much interested in mending Christian divisions. And time and again, he would write, sometimes to the Corinthians, helping them to mend the divisions within them, sometimes to the Philippians, advising them on how to solve their differences. All for a reason. He learned a great lesson, that as often as we touch believers, as often as we touch the members of Christ's body, we are actually touching Jesus Christ. As dear friends in Christ, this message came powerfully to him on uh, what we often refer to as the Damascus experience in Acts chapter 9 verse 4. When Jesus Christ will call him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And then this young man will pause to act. Have I touched you, Lord? And then he would be taught there and then on the road that as often as you touch a Christian, you are touching the very body of Christ. Now, dear friends in Christ, this lesson comes very powerfully in the first reading of this day on this seventh Sunday of Easter. In the account of the death or the martyrdom of Stephen, as is recorded in Acts chapter 7, the servant who became an ardent defender of the teachings of Christ encountered a very strong opposition. Eventually, out of jealousy and envy, he would have to die through stoning. But then he died, and even in his death, he was Christ-like. And so he died praying for his enemies, asking God that he does not hold the sins of his persecutors as killers against them. Now, dear friends in Christ, the interesting thing was that we are told that there was a young man by name Saul who watched all these proceedings go on. And I believe somehow he was moved by the event. And then later on in the chapter 9, he would have his own one-on-one -on -one experience with Jesus on the road to Damascus. And there and then he would begin to understand that the very Christians he's trying to divide, the very Christians he's trying to persecute, the very mission he's fighting to make sure that the good news of Christ does not go beyond the borders of Jerusalem, was actually a fight against Christ. And so this will be part and parcel of St. Paul's uh, theology, that as many as come to believe in Christ, they form one single body. And so he calls them the mystical body of Christ. And that is what we are as believers. Now, dear friends in Christ, interestingly, in our gospel today, Jesus Christ is pointing to the true origin of what we call Christian unity. He pointed as having its foundation in the unity of the divinity, the Godhead. And so, in sincerity, St. John is telling us today, that Jesus Christ lifted his eyes to heaven, and the prayer that was so dear to his heart as he sat at table with his disciples, what we call the priestly prayer of Jesus, was that, Father, 
just as you and I are one, so let all these others who are my believers, my followers, also be one, just as we are, so that in their unity, the world will know that truly they are my followers. It is in presenting a common front for the gospel that the world will know that indeed they belong to me and that they were indeed a gift you, the Father, gave them to me. And so, dear friends in Christ, you realize that we bruise the heart of Jesus. We let his heart bleed whenever we sow divisions and discord and rancor within the Christian fellowship or Christian family as believers. If you ever have a problem in a society, in a group within the church, and you are not sure how to handle it, Today, St. Stephen gives us an example how to deal with people who behave like they are your enemies. You pray for them. You ask God's pardon for them and that you sincerely ask God not to hold their sins against them. In that, they would see a power that is greater than the power they carry and that would lead to their conversion. A sincere prayer like that by St. Stephen is what eventually would bring Saul, the one who was witness, and in fact uh, a collaborator in his martyrdom, to eventually turn and become a Christian and a powerful one at that, of course. It is our prayer today, as we celebrate this seventh Sunday in Easter, especially as we put ourselves together, body and soul, spiritually and physically, awaiting a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that you and I would have a bit of the Spirit of Stephen in us, and that we will realize that even when we are undergoing suffering experiences and painful experiences and persecutions, we can still be Christ-like, and not through pain, soul divisions, and rancor within the members of Christ. At the end, we defeat the very reason why Jesus Christ came to die for us. The very reason why he came into this world was to bring lost humanity once again to unite with God and eventually form one single family out of us. And that was his dearest and sincerest prayer as he offers us today in John chapter 17. It is my prayer that as we prepare our hearts and our minds for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit, there will be people who would pursue the very mission of Christ. Unity in the body of Christ. Unity in our various Christian groupings. Unity in our various Christian families. Unity in our various Christian societies. It is in that that we will truly receive the recompense, the reward that the Lord comes with. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless and keep you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.